What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. You can find me on TikTok at Noah More Parties. Come hop in my mentions over there. Tell me I'm a piece of shit. Uh, and today's video is the first video of the off season for me. And what I like to do during the off season is look at these rookie prospects. I uh, particularly like to look at these running backs. Pretty fun rookie running back class. So today we're going to go through just a few guys, um, quick breakdown, overview, as well as look at some some comps for each of these guys. I like different points in their range of outcomes. What kind of players could they turn out to be in the NFL? Let's get into it. <laughs> All right, I got 10 guys here. 10 guys. This is not my top 10. Don't go on Twitter and say this was my top 10 because it's not. This also isn't anybody else's top. Well, it might be somebody else's top 10. I don't know. This is just the 10 guys that I wrote down for this video. I know that there are other players in this class. I'm not going to talk about Kendra Miller in this video. I'm not talking about Chase Brown in this video. I'm not talking about Tajay Spears in this video. I know he's he's uh, uh, catching a lot of hype right now at the Senior Bowl. This is just 10 guys. It's not the 10 guys. It's 10 guys. Uh, we're going to start with Bijan Robinson though. He is one guy, but he might be the guy. Uh, he's listed at six foot 222 at Texas last year. Um, he's kind of like a, a less extreme version of Saquon Barkley. Saquon is faster, I think, than, than Bijan will be. Um, Saquon, I think, was a little bit more like boom bust of a runner compared to Bijan. Uh, Saquon coming out of Penn State was, you know, very like, you know, on the spectrum of like just pure runner. This is, you know, Frank Gore to pure athlete. Saquon was a little bit towards the athlete side. Bijan is as well, I think, but a little bit more um, of a pure runner than Saquon was, but he's just an all-purpose back. Um, he's big, He's athletic. Uh, he can catch the ball really well out of the backfield as well as downfield. And the way I'm gonna I'm gonna structure the comps I'm kind of talking about in this video is I don't want to jump to like best case scenario, like 100th percentile outcome for each of these guys because that's not interesting. If every player hit 100% of their potential, they'd all be in the Hall of Fame. They landed in the exact right spot. They never got hurt. They played as well as they could in every game ever. Like that's. It's, it's not interesting. It's not helpful for fantasy football. So we're going to talk about 90th percentile outcomes for these players, but I don't want to just talk about 90th percentile outcomes. I also want to talk about like 60th percentile outcomes. If these guys hit like 60% of their potential, what kinds of players are they in the NFL? Not every dude goes to the NFL and is like pretty much as good as they can be. And then I also want to talk about 30th percentile outcomes. The, the worst possible, you know, worst case scenario is that these guys like, you know, rip up their knees in training camp or get Get arrested and then like don't really ever do anything in the NFL or like it just turns out they can't play. That's also not interesting. Like Bijan Robinson could hypothetically be Trent Richardson, but like that's it's not an interesting or helpful discussion to talk about that. So we're not going to. So we're going to go 90th percentile, 60th percentile, 30th percentile for each of these guys comps at those different spots in the range of outcomes. For Bijan Robinson, the 90th percentile outcome I believe is David Johnson. Uh, David Johnson was big, like six foot two twenty. Same thing as David Johnson, or same thing. Is Bijan Robinson. David Johnson was famously very athletic at the combine. I think Bijan has a chance to do that. David Johnson was also a maybe not the most natural runner, but he was effective on the ground because of his like athletic tools, but he was really good as a downfield receiver. You'll remember back in 2016, he was probably the best, you know, all-purpose running back in the league with his ability to run the ball, you know, run the ball on the ground as well as catch the ball out of the backfield. Super versatile. I think Bijan Robinson can be that kind of player. 60th percentile outcome for Bijan Robinson is like Joe Mixon. I think Joe Mixon was a similar prospect coming out of college a few years ago and the like downfield pass catching part of his game that he showed at Oklahoma just hasn't really manifested in the NFL. And I don't know if that's, you know, Mixon just wasn't actually that good at that. I don't know if that was because the Bengals just have never unlocked that part of his game. But if the receiving chops for Bijan Robinson never like fully materialize in the NFL, he still has that like workhorse escape hatch where he can be a good runner on the ground for several years, churning out 1000 yard seasons as a lead back in an NFL backfield, just like Joe Mixon has. And the 30th percentile outcome for Bijan Robinson is like, I, th this is tough because it's like a guy this good. It's hard to think of like a, a player that's not that good that he could be, but like Roy Hallou, uh, I would be kind of shocked if Bijan Robinson turned into Roy Hallou, but Roy Hallou is a freaky athlete who is kind of an all-purpose guy who was just sort of like a role player. So sure. Roy Hallou. Uh, the next guy I want to talk about is Jameer Gibbs listed at five foot 11, 200 pounds. Uh, he's elusive, not super powerful. Like he's, he's obviously like small 
relatively slim for a running back. Elite receiver out of the backfield can run uh, routes from the slot, um, angle routes out of the backfield. He's really nice wheel routes. I'm not sure how much of like a pure runner he is. He, he bounces things a little bit. He's got some skittishness to his game as a runner. I think the 90th percentile outcome for Jameer Gibbs is Reggie Bush. Um, they're different players in the way that they like move on the field. Bush is a lot more like demonstrative in his cuts and things like that. Jameer Gibbs is more like self-contained in the way that he's elusive, but the way that they impact the game as guys who don't need a ton of touches on the ground, don't even need to be particularly efficient on the ground. Reggie Bush strung together like three straight RB1 level seasons to start his career with the Saints, never averaged more than like 3.8 yards per carry in those seasons. I think Gibbs can do the same thing because Bush was being moved around the formation, thrown the ball out of the backfield, used as like this versatile queen chess piece. I think that could be Gibbs. He's not Alvin Kamara. I don't think he necessarily needs to be. Uh, the 60th percentile outcome for a guy like this, though, is like Chris Thompson, Naeem Hines. If he's not a focal point of an offense in the NFL, we're hoping for, like, reception-fueled PPR relevance out of a guy who is, like, a third down back. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Like, Chris Thompson was a good player. Naeem Hines is a good player. James Cook looks like that same type of player. He's a good player, I think. If these guys aren't made focal points of their offenses, these guys who are like smaller catch passes aren't the best pure runners. Like, what are we hoping for? There's just not a whole lot of like outs to fantasy relevance if Jameer Gibbs is not going to be the focal point of an offense. And the 30th percent of outcome for a guy like that is like Tyler Goodson. I don't envision this for Jameer Gibbs, but there's just so many good satellite backs from college who come into the NFL. There aren't enough spots for guys like this. Jameer Gibbs should get draft capital. He went to Alabama. Like he's he's got, you know, I don't I don't know. He's he's got things built into his profile that should help him avoid irrelevance in the NFL. But for guys like this, that's the, you know, towards the bottom end of the range of outcomes. The next guy is Zach Charbonnet. Uh 6 foot 1, 220 out of UCLA. He is a big dude athletic, uh, can play on all three downs, I think, because he's got soft hands. I'm not sure he's like a versatile receiver, but he can catch a check down. He can catch a swing pass. Uh, the film on this guy is a roller coaster. He's got some like, what the fuck are you doing moments, uh, where he just like makes inexplicable decisions or kind of like, almost like can't figure out what move he wants to make and just kind of like brain farts on the field, but he's an angry runner. He's great in the open field. He breaks tackles. I, I like Zach Charbonnet quite a bit. The 90th percentile outcome for him, I think, is Leonard Fournette, someone who's big, someone who's fast, someone who's physical, someone who is a check down hero in the passing game. Nobody more than Leonard Fournette has just been absolutely fed dump offs in the passing game as like a big, you know, two down pounder than Leonard Fournette. The 60th percentile outcome for a guy like this is Sony Michelle. Sometimes it just doesn't all translate. Coming out, we thought Sony Michelle, he was getting Alvin Kamara comps too. Uh, we thought he was like this, this versatile weapon in the passing game. He was throwing dead legs at everybody, and now he's just a blah, two down grinder in the NFL. Nothing spectacular. Zach Charbonnet could be that as well. And the bottom 30th percentile of this range of outcomes is like Trey Sermon. Sometimes it doesn't all translate, but sometimes none of it translates. And so far, it seems like none of it for Trey Sermon has translated. I think Charbonnet is faster than Trey Sermon, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. Uh, and I think Trey Sermon's a good player, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. Uh, the next guy is Tank Bigsby, six foot, 213 out of Auburn. He had one of the best freshman seasons, really in SEC history, you could argue, um, he ran for like 800 yards that year as a true freshman at Auburn. He, he averaged 1.48 yards per carry greater than the other backs at Auburn were averaging. So he was ridiculously efficient on the ground. I think six yards per carry, just like raw, but almost one and a half yards per carry more than the other guys at Auburn. Ridiculous efficiency as a true freshman. He's averaged fewer yards per carry than the collective other guys at Auburn in both seasons since. Has he been hurt? Has it just been like a shitty situation with a terrible offense? Brian Harson there. Did Tank Bigsby like get, did he regress? I don't know. I need to watch uh, a little bit more. Well, I probably, I don't know. Not about watching film, really. I've watched quite a bit of film on him. I just don't really have a comparison point of, like, here's what he was as a freshman to now. I don't know if he was hurt. I don't know if it's a situation. He hasn't played well recently. Um, This last year, he had, like, a 15% target share. Relatively high diversity route tree. He's not just catching swing passes. He was running, you know, out routes, angle routes, dig routes over the middle of the field, things like that. Um, So there's a chance that he has some pass catching upside. In a workhorse size body at almost 215 pounds, 6 feet tall. The thing about this guy on film is he jukes everything in sight. He's trying to make everybody miss. He thinks he's LaShawn McCoy. It just doesn't work very well for him. Like, I th he's got athletic tools. I think he just needs to, like, slow down and mature a little bit as a runner and not try to shake everybody 
out of their shoes on the field. 90th percentile outcome for Tank Bigsby, I believe, is Miles Sanders. Lots of raw tools for both of these guys. Some of them have come together for Miles Sanders, but never all at once. Like this last year, he turned in a pretty effective, pretty consistent running back on the ground after being, you know, wildly inconsistent early on, his, early on in his career. Miles Sanders also came into the league with some receiving ability that kind of flashed as a, as a rookie. I think he had like 50 receptions, 500 receiving yards as a rookie. Since then, he's done nothing as a receiver. So the, the tools kind of materialize at different times, but never all at the same time. If Miles Sanders could put it all together at once, he'd be a beast. Similar for Tank Bigsby, I just don't know that I, that I see that happening. 60th percentile outcome for this guy is like carry on Johnson where he, he flashes a little bit, uh, but ultimately doesn't quite work out. I know Karrion Johnson got hurt, but, you know, that happens. Uh, 30th percentile outcome for this guy is Isaiah Spiller, who came into the league, uh, was another one of these, like, good footwork, looks good on film guys, um, you know, explosive cuts, things like that. Maybe he just can't play, and maybe Tank Bigsby just can't play. I don't know. Uh, the next guy I want to talk about is Sean Tucker out of Syracuse, listed at 5'10", 210 pounds this last season. Uh, this guy is incredibly explosive. I, I had a tweet a couple weeks ago like that my comp for him was like Wiley Coyote getting shot out of one of his Acme rockets just like running into a wall at 200 miles an hour because Sean Tucker is like 100 miles an hour all the time, super fast. There's I've seen speculation that he runs in the four twos. I'm, I'm not like a 40 time predictor, but I've seen that from other people. He had 36 receptions this season, up and down efficiency as a college player, not very good this last year um, from an efficiency standpoint. I think the 90th percentile uh, outcome for this guy is like Travis Etienne. Uh, raw, all over, Travis Etienne makes some boneheaded decisions with the ball. He, you know, kind of not great technique as a pass catcher, but the explosiveness for Travis Etienne covers up a lot of sins and allows him to be an effective player on the field. And I think that could happen for Sean Tucker. Next step down, 60th percentile outcome for this guy is like Jarek McKinnon, where he, you know, finds a role in a backfield, flashes as a reserve player. We want more from him. Turns out he's not quite suited to have, you know, a larger role in a backfield, but he finds a niche like Jarek McKinnon has and sticks around for a while as a decent little player. And the 30th percentile outcome for a guy like this is Ty Johnson, I think, who sticks around because he's explosive and athletic and can do things out in space, but just doesn't quite have the full skill set to be like a regular part of an offense. Next guy I want to talk about is Zach Evans from formerly of TCU, last year at Ole Miss, listed at six foot and 215 pounds. Don't listen to the, the Twitter dorks who thinks he's 195 pounds because that's what sports reference has. On the Ole Miss roster, he's 215 pounds. Look at him on film. He's clearly 200, he's not 195 pounds. Uh, he's big. And this dude is built different. He is just a beast. He does not give a fuck on the field. Sometimes it looks like he's really mad. Sometimes it looks like he's not even trying. Sometimes both things in the same play, but he is good. There, there are people are going to be mad that he didn't produce. He's a former five-star prospect, a uh, five-star recruit, uh, had a little bit of an up and down career with injuries, sharing time with other good players, uh, Quinshawn Judkins, Kendra Miller. He transferred. He had like a whirlwind recruitment that all the boomers got pissed off about. And now they think he's got like character concerns. I don't know. None of these people have ever talked to him. Zach Evans seems like a decent enough kid to me. But he's a man amongst boys as a runner out on the field. He's got some drop problems as a receiver, but I think he's got potential there. Uh, the 90th percentile outcome for this guy is DeMarco Murray, a tall, uh, kind of full skill set runner who can make people miss as well as run with power and catch the ball out of the backfield. If, if if the flashes that Zach Evans has in the passing game translate to the NFL and he can kind of fix his, his incons... I, I think his drop problem is concentration drops for the most part. If he can fix that, he's a prototype RB1 level talent who I would not be shocked to see like produce as this class is RB1. He's one of the few guys in this class who could end up being the best player in the class. He just needs to put it all together. 60th percentile for this guy is like Elijah Mitchell, a, you know, kind of a, uh, I don't know, big dude with speed, one cut runner, you know, outside zone fit, passing game usage doesn't translate. He could be Elijah Mitchell, thousand yard runner, good player, not great. Uh, 30th percentile outcome is like Mike Gillisley, I guess. I think Zach Evans is much more gifted athletically than Gillisley was. 
But if you remember, Gillisley was a nice little player playing behind LaShawn McCoy in Buffalo. Always super efficient. I think he had two straight seasons of over like five and a half yards per carry, splitting time with LaShawn McCoy or, or playing behind LaShawn McCoy. Zach Evans could do that. He spent some time doing shit like that in college behind like Kendra Miller and Quinshawn. I think that could be him. I uh, hope it's not him. I hope he's better than Mike Gillisley. I think he's better than Mike Gillisley. But, you know, worst comes to worst, I think that could be um, a spot for him. Next guy is Devon A. Chain, five foot nine and 185 pounds out of Texas A&M. Another one of these small guys, he's not Jameer Gibbs as a pass catcher, but I think he's a smooth pass catcher. Uh, I don't know anybody in the country in the NFL who can cover this dude on a wheel route up the sideline out of the backfield. He runs like 10, what is like 10-2 in the 100 meter dash, like 20.2 in the 200 meter dash. He's got near Olympic speed on the track. He's ridiculously fast on the field as well. And I think he's one of the best pure runners in this class from like a skill set point of view. He's not super powerful, but his speed allows him to not, in, in, cer in certain circumstances, allows him to make up for his lack of power a little bit because he just doesn't take direct shots often because he's so damn fast. Uh, 90th percentile outcome for a guy like A-Chain is Jamal Charles, who was another uh, relatively skinny and light player. I think there's a chance A-Chain could get up to near 195 pounds by the time the combine rolls around, which I think would be big for him. But Jamal Charles was slim, super fast, just like A-Chain, a re good receiver out in space, and a legit runner. Like, Jamal Charles would, was not just a satellite back as a small running back. He was the lead runner on several NFL teams. Jamal Charles was a lead runner throughout much of his prime uh, split time with other players, which I think would be good for A-Chain as well. But I think he could be a Jamal Charles level player at his, you know, near his peak. 60th percentile outcome for a guy like A-Chain is Raheem Mostert, who is another skinny guy, uh, but just really refined runner, especially in like outside zone schemes. Um, just plants his foot, knows where to go. I think A-Chain could do that. And then the 30th percentile outcome for a guy like this is like Dontrell Hilliard, I guess, who small, athletic, good out in space, just kind of a complimentary role player. Uh, another guy who's kind of like this is Deuce Vaughn, who is even smaller at five foot six and 176 pounds out of Kansas State. Absolutely tiny, but this guy is explosive and quick, shifty in the open field, would be a, like tackling, trying to tackle a rabbit out in the open field. Like this dude is just small, jitterbug, out in space. He's good. He ran the most diverse route tree in the entire country of any running back in college football last year, ignoring guys who played at like service academies or had like five targets. He ran the most varied route tree, downfield, checkdowns, screens, angle, like everything. This dude was doing it as a receiver. He is excellent as a pass catcher out of the backfield. Maybe the best in the class, maybe better than Jameer Gibbs. It's one of the two of them. 90th percentile outcome for a guy like this is Darren Sproles. I don't think there's much chance that Deuce Vaughn is going to get like a lot of work on the ground in the NFL. But like Darren Sproles, another Kansas State guy, it's an easy comp, but it makes sense. He could be like a premier satellite back for a long time in the league. 60th percentile outcome for a guy like this is like Donnell Pumphrey, who was another like 170 pound, 175 pound running back a couple years ago who was productive in college, productive pass catcher in college, athletic, but like the... There's, there is no floor for a 175 pound running back. He's either, like he could be Darren Sproles. He could also just not be anything. Like Puka Williams is the guy I put down for the 30th percentile outcome. Ridiculous tape as a freshman at Kansas. Super, you know, like explosive, dynamic runner in the open field. Is he even on an NFL roster? I, I don't know. If Deuce Vaughn hits the bottom end of his range of outcomes, it's going to look like zero career fantasy points. The next guy I want to talk about is Izzy Israel Abanacanda. 5'11", 215 pounds at a pit. He's explosive. Uh, doesn't look like much of a receiver uh, based on the numbers. I haven't watched a ton of film on this guy. Watched one game of film. I was impressed. Need to watch more. First impression is the 90th percentile outcome for him is like a Latavius Murray type. I know Latavius Murray is bigger. I think he's he's taller. Latavius Murray is like 6'2 or something and like 15 pounds heavier than Abanacanda. So Abanacanda is like a shrunk down version of Latavius Murray, but they're both tall runners. Like they run tall. Uh, straight line guys, smooth and explosive. Big plays waiting to happen. Latavius Murray has been a big play guy, especially when he was younger with the Raiders. Um, I think Abanacanda can be a guy like that who is just kind of a, a good role player on an NFL team, can step in and be the RB1 for a few weeks if a guy goes down. Um, he could even carry the load for a season at a time, but he's not a guy that anyone's going to go out and be like, we need to get that guy as our starting running back, you know, rock with it. Uh, but I think he, he could be a good player. 
60th percentile outcome for a guy like this is Ronald Jones. If he just like never quite figures it out, but his raw talent like continues to earn him opportunities, I think Abanacan has got a lot of raw talent. Maybe he never figures it out. And the bottom 30th percentile for a guy like this is like Raquel Armstead, who I think also is a talented player kind of in this mold but is kind of just a guy. I think there's a decent chance that a Banacanda is just a guy. Uh, and the last guy I want to talk about in this video is Kenny McIntosh out of Georgia, who is like, if you like James Cook last year, uh, I'd see no reason to not like Kenny McIntosh because I think McIntosh is significantly... He's not nearly as fast as James Cook, but if you were in on James Cook because of the way that he was used in the passing game as like a versatile weapon, lined up outside, could make people miss in the open field, McIntosh is that, but at 210 pounds. So potential for like actual work on the ground from McIntosh. He's not really like a great pure runner. I think he could kind of fumble his way through that on, you know, on an NFL field, but he's never going to be like a plus contributor there, I don't think, but he's very versatile as a receiver. He's a weird mover in space, like these weird like dips. He's got a little bit of Alvin Kamara to his game in the open field. This is not an Alvin Kamara comp. You look at the way this guy moves and like shakes defenders. It's a little, it's a little herky jerky and weird in the same way that Alvin Kamara is herky jerky and weird. Great tackle breaker in the open field. I think the 90th percentile for this guy is like Kenyon Drake, big satellite back guy who kind of leaves us always wanting more. Like, okay, if you're 210 pounds and you can catch passes, why can't you be David Johnson? Not everybody's David Johnson, but a, like a complimentary role, I think is ideal for Kenny McIntosh at the next level. 60th percentile outcome for a guy like this is like Dare Agumbawale. Similar mold, like a Charles Sims type who, you know, a satellite back with good size, kind of a jack of all trades type of guy. His reliability, his versatility keeps him around. He's sort of a plug and play player. I think McIntosh can do that. And the 30th percentile outcome for a guy like this is Zaquandre White, a guy who I loved coming out last year, but is just like so raw that I think it's difficult for him to find a niche. But Zaquandre White was also a, just a bizarre player out in the open field. He was like jumping over people. I, I, I compared him to like drunk Alvin Kamara last year. And Kenny McIntosh, again, has some of that to his game. Just a unique player. He's fun. We'll see. So there you go. That's, uh, that's 10 running backs in this rookie class. Some comps quick overview uh smash that like button you know what i'm saying uh yeah i don't know follow me on twitter catch you uh, i think i'm doing videos on wednesdays and saturdays so catch you on wednesday have a great day